Hi, I'm Jim Covington. Today is August 18th, 2016. I'd like to welcome you to this week's issue of ISBA Statehouse Review. The governor has signed five bills into law, and they're all fairly important for the practicing lawyer in a couple subject matter areas, and I'll just run through them very quickly. Uh, all of them have an effective date of January 1, 2017, except one, and that is the uh, income shares bill that will be July 1 of 2017, but I'll specific, specifically note that when discussing the income shares bill, which is my first bill to talk about, Public Act 99-764, uh, introduced by Kelly Burke from Oak Lawn and Senator Mike Hastings from uh, uh, Matson, and it moves Illinois into the majority of the other states. I think we're like the 43rd or 44th to adopt an income shares model for adjudicating child support, where it's not the straight obligors percentage. They look at everything in sort of a total pot, the needs of the children, the needs of the child, uh, the ability of the parents. That'll take effect on July 1, 2017 to give uh, HFS, uh, the Department of Health Care and Family Services and others, time to, to implement that uh, in the courts. Uh, the rest of the bills I will talk about uh, take effect at the start of the year. The uh, uh, next bill is uh, uh, amends the Parentage Act of 2015. That's Public Act 99-769, introduced by Representative Kelly Burke from uh, uh, Oak Lawn and Senator John Mulrow of Chicago. And it makes a number of what I would call technical corrections to the recent Parentage Act. There was a huge rewrite of the Parentage Act last year. Um, there were just a little things that they had to kind of uh, clean up. Uh, for example, they were assuming that a Supreme Court rule would be adopted trying to protect confidential information. That Supreme Court rule was withdrawn, and federal law required that the uh, personal information of parents and children was necessary, but uh, the bill protects that to keep that information private, but they can still use that so for identification of children and parents. The next bill is a also sort of what I would call a technical corrections bill, uh, and it is uh, the uh, cleanup of the uh, Illinois Marriage and Dissolution of Marriage Act. It's Public Act 99-763, uh, also introduced by uh, Representative Kelly Burke from uh, Oak Lawn and Senator John Mulrow of Chicago. It does another of uh, things like uh, correcting uh, uh, incorrect cross-references or if a, if a part of a statute was uh, deleted, uh, you know, to, to take that thing out there. It does make some clarifying changes that I think the proponents last year intended, uh, but didn't get completely done that might be considered substantive. Uh, for example, it clarifies for post-educational expenses that the guide is in-state tuition at the University of Illinois at Champaign-Urbana. Urbana-Champaign, pardon me, uh, clarifies the 25 mile, mile standard on relocation is based on an internet mapping service, um, clarifies that the two-year ban from amending a judgment applies only to, quote, parental decision-making responsibilities, close quote, and doesn't apply to parenting time, and clarifies that a respondent who doesn't file an appearance is not required to file a parenting plan unless specifically ordered to do so by the court. And finally, it uh, includes a new Article 7 of the Parentage Act uh, affecting artificial reproduction that rep replaces the current article in that act uh, that is considered outdated. Uh, that was not included because it was still being worked on in last year's rewrite of the Parentage Act. That takes effect, this entire bill takes effect on January 1, 2017. The next bill is important to estate planners and I think some commercial lawyers, and that uh, creates the Revised Uniform Fiduciary Access to Digital Assets Act. Um, it's Public Act 99-775. It's introduced by Chris Welch from, uh, Representative Chris Welch from Westchester and Senator Mike Conley from Lyle. And basically when someone passes away, a lot of their assets or information to their assets is all digital and each company that handles that may have different rules. This creates, you know, one set of standard uniform rules for procedures and requirements for the access and control by guardians, exec executors, agents, and other fiduciaries of the digital assets of persons who are deceased under a legal disability or subject to the terms of the trust. And I've got a correction here. That took effect on August 12th. 2016. So that was effective immediately when the governor signed it. So that bill is effective immediately. If you do any estate planning or have documents for uh, wards, disabled adults, uh, that sort of thing, you may want to take a look at your forms 
and the bill because I, it's my recollection uh, that the um, you have to have some of your, your your some of your forms may need to be changed to conform to this to make it work for you and your clients. The final bill I'd like to talk to you about is uh, amends the personal guardian statute of the probate code. It's uh, Public Act 99-821, introduced by uh, Representative Laura Fine from Glenview and Senator Ira Silverstein from Chicago. Um, if there is no court order to the contrary, requires the guardian to use reasonable efforts to notify the wards and known adult children who have requested notification to provide contact information of the ward's admission to the hospital or hospice program, the arrangements for the disposition dis disposition of the ward's remains or the ward's death. It also provides that if a guardian unreasonably prevents an adult child of the ward from visiting the ward, the court upon a verified petition by the adult child may order the guardian to permit visitation between the ward and the adult child if the court finds that the visitation is in the ward's best interest. And that takes effect on January 1, 2017. It uh, exempts uh, appointed public guardians and the Office of State Guardian. Thank you for listening and we'll see you next week.